In this short video, we're going to look at lines as geometric option, geometric objects in two space or three space. Let's start in R2. If we're given a line in the xy plane, how can we find a vector equation of the line? Well, here we have a line and we have information about the rise and the run. We know that the rise is 2 and the run is 3. And we'd like to start by finding a vector which is parallel to this line. And we can choose any vector. So I'm going to make use of this information about the rise and the run and choose the vector v equals 3 comma 2. This vector, which is parallel to the line, is called a direction vector of the line. I could have chosen negative 3 comma negative 2, or I could have chosen 6 comma 4. All of those vectors are parallel to the line. All of them could be used as a direction vector. Now there's infinitely many lines that have that same direction vector, we need to make it specific to this line. So I need a fixed point on the line. So I chose a point P. And the coordinates of point P are negative 5 comma negative 2. And so the vector OP is going to be called an initial vector. I could have chosen any other point on the line if I wanted to. I could have chosen, for example, 4 comma 4 as my point to obtain the initial vector. But I chose the given point P. And so the idea is if you choose any other point on the line, it has a corresponding initial vector. So I chose a point Q. And uh, so the idea is you can get to the point Q by first going to your initial point P and then following the line. Well, following the line means taking a multiple of the direction vector. And so in this case, my point Q, the position vector for point Q is the same as going to point P and then going twice the vector V. So again, I want to know the position vector going from the origin to point Q. I could go there directly, or I could first go to P and then go twice the length of V in the direction of V. So for a general line, the direction vector, we're just going to use arbitrary scalars A and B for the components. And the initial vector is just going to have x naught and y naught as its components. And if I want to get a, some generic point Q with coordinates x, y, its position vector would have components x comma y. And so the position vector of any point on the line can be written as a linear combination of the initial vector and the direction vector. Now, the initial vector always has a coefficient of 1. And this t is a parameter uh, which gets multiplied by the direction vector. So the more generic way or most general way of writing this is vector r equals r naught plus scalar t times direction vector v. So that's what we just derived here, is this equation here. What's nice about that equation is that if you set the corresponding components equal to each other, you get a pair of 
parametric equations in terms of your initial values for x and y and the components of the direction vector. Now that idea can be extended to higher dimensions. So for example in R3 we're going to still have a direction vector. So the direction vector v is parallel to the line and it passes through the point x0, y0, z0, so that will give us our initial vector. And uh, we still have the parameter t. And from that we can also get now three parametric equations. Now, parametric equations are not unique. Uh, as we said, we could choose any point on the line to give us an initial vector, and we can choose any vector which is parallel to the line as a direction vector. In particular, if you have one direction vector, you can multiply that direction vector by any scalar and you'll get another perfectly valid direction vector. We can get a, an expression or equations for the line which are free of parameters provided that a, b, and c from the components of the direction vector are all non-zero. In that case we can solve for t and uh, get the following symmetric equations. Let's look at a couple of examples. So here in 3 space I have two points and I'd like to find the equation of the line passing through it. So my first step will be to find a direction vector and I'll just use the vector from P to Q. Remember our memory aid is we just think Q minus P, we're going to subtract corresponding uh, coordinates of Q and then minus P and that gives us our direction vector as negative 1 comma 13 comma negative 11. And we can use any point on the line, we're given 2, so I'll use point P to get the initial vector. And now I got my vector equation and then just setting corresponding components equal to each other, I get my parametric equations x equals negative t, y equals negative 5 plus 13 t, and z equals 12 minus 11 t. Let's look at another example. In this example we are given the equation of two different lines and I'm using two different letters for the parameters in these vector equations uh, because uh, it's unlikely that they represent the same value. So we'd like to know if these two lines intersect. And if they do intersect, let's find that point of intersection. Well, if these two line intersects, there must be values for s and t. They could be different numbers such that the position vector for L2 is the same as the position vector for L1. Now, if that's true, I can write down a system of equations by looking at, again, just corresponding components. The first component tells me negative 5 plus s would equal 1 minus 2t. Second component says negative 4 plus 0 equals negative 8 plus t. And then the third component says 20 would equal 4s, no, sorry, 20 plus 4s would equal 0 plus 3t. So uh, I can s clean those equations up a little bit. I like to write the variables on the left hand side and the constants on the right hand side. And in this case, the second equation gives me a value for t. t would have to equal 4. I'm going to go ahead and substitute that value into the first equation and I'll find that s equals negative 2. Now I can't stop here 
these values for s and t have to work for all three equations. So let me make sure they work in the third equation. And I would take negative 4 times negative 2 plus 3 times 4. That gives me 8 plus 12. And sure enough, that equals 20. So good. I know that when t equals 4 and s equals negative 2, the position vector for line 2 is the same as the position vector for line 1. And so what is that position vector? In both cases, it has components negative 7, negative 4, 12, meaning that the point of intersection is negative 7, negative 4, 12. Now, if we could not find any values for s and t which satisfied this vector equation, in other words, if there was no position vector which was common to both, uh, both equations, then we would conclude that the lines do not intersect. So I hope you found this video useful, and we'll talk about two-dimensional objects called planes in our next video.